Hello everybody, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and this video is my contribution to a project that composer David Bruce reached out to a few people about, in which we compose a piece of music for an orchestra, but each of the players plays it in isolation from each other, so that the parts are all going to be slightly off, slightly like off-tempo, um, just sort of like uh, a reinterpretation, a smearing of the performances. So uh, this video goes over um, my approach to the composition, um, and then uh, we listen to what happens afterwards. This is a small part of a much bigger video that David has uploaded today. I just kind of wanted to put something on my channel as well, so please check the links in the video description or check the little uh, card thing that pops up here and go check out David's video. Uh, this was a lot of fun to do, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Enjoy. Bye. Hello, my name is Jeremy. I'm from a YouTube channel called Red Means Recording. I was asked by David to work on this, and it was a really cool challenge, and I want to talk to you about what I made and what uh, what came back. So with this concept of phase that was going to be inherent to the individual uh, instruments playing these in isolation, I thought it might be kind of cool to create a relationship in the composition itself that would allow for a at least harmonic relationship once they got out of time. So what I did was I used this sort of motif, this arpeggiated motif, with multiple parts at different timings so that even if they hit a note that didn't really belong uh, in that time, it would still sound good. And when we put these together, we get this. So you can hear, even in my version of this, that there is a sort of, uh, you know, cycling relationship with the notes. It's a lot of how I uh, end up composing for modular when I'm dealing with more generative sequences. After I made that up, I uh, added some flute. I'm like, we need a lead voice. And as a former flautist, I was like, okay, I think I could probably write a lead line for flute. Then I did some lead lines. I did a lead flute. These are all contact instruments, by the way. I got a little bit through it and I realized that I was missing some low end, so I decided to let a bass sound come in. Now bass, in this context, because there isn't a chord progression on top, is gonna really change the relationship we have with the concept of our tonic note, which means that however this bass was gonna come in uh, in the um, real recording of this was going to have an effect on what happened on top. And I wanted the top to be sort of having its own permutation and the bottom to have its own permutation. And then finally, at the end, I was like, let's do some trumpet. But you'll notice there's a relationship between that and what the flute did. Again, I'm not a classical composer, but <laughs> I had some ideas on how to present this to uh, the orchestra in a way that I thought might end up kind of cool. So after I wrote my piece to get it over there, in case anyone's wondering how this worked out, I had to translate my uh, my Ableton session to sheet music. So I exported each one of the individual tracks as a MIDI file. And then I went into this program called MuseScore. And um, I imported the uh, individual parts and had MuseScore um, translate the MIDI to sheet music. And then I did my best with um, what I know about uh, scoring and, and sheet music to try to make it a little bit readable. This was definitely an interesting challenge. It's been a long time since I've looked at sheet music. You can see here that I added some leg, um, and so that's very good. This is the leg section. So let's check out what I got sent back. Uh, David sent back um, all of these files. These are all individual takes, and there might even be more um, that I didn't include in here. And again, this was kind of an odd project because the way that it was described both as a concept to begin with and the way that it was described as what we could do with it once we got the takes back was a little confusing. I was in the impression that like, oh, when you get this back, um, all you can do is line up the beginnings of things. And I was like, 
Okay, uh, let's check that out. David, that sounds bad. Uh, I don't know about this. I didn't understand that he meant we could move things to the beginning of where they were actually supposed to appear in the phrasing. David was awesome, and he did a little mix of this for me and sent it back, which was much more listenable. So let's go ahead and check that out now. Okay, so this is what the orchestra recorded, David mixed for me, and um, yeah, let's check it out and see what happened. So we're already sort of off, but in a good way, and that's what I was hoping for. The notes still have a good relationship with each other. Great flute tone. Holy moly, that's beautiful. Damn. Flautist. You sound great. I love the swirling relationship of notes underneath. This is exactly what I wanted. Second flat sounds really good too. Oh yes. It's amazing what that sustained bass does to the, the feeling of the mix. That's that's really cool. Yes! That's really, really cool. The tale that I wrote for this uh, that has that sort of um, that resting point where uh, everything goes to a major third, I believe, in relation to what's going on. I don't know. Um, uh, is exactly how I wanted this to play out, and it worked. Um, I knew that we were going to have different timings. I knew that we were going to have different um, interpretations of uh, the tempo. Um, even though I put a, a BPM marker in there, I didn't expect anyone to play along with it. It was more just a suggestion. So um, creating these uh, these entry points and these uh, exit points that both were going to be sort of safe places, and then creating within the context of the composition itself um, safe relationships harmonically so that it doesn't just like turn into uh, a you know mess of of dissonant jello um, and this worked out really really well in the composition that i created there was much more distinct events whereas this it's much more of a, a impressionist smear and i really really like that uh it's it's i mean nowhere near but very inspired by like Debussy and and you know how I remember Le Maire and stuff like that, so it turned out really really well uh, for the for the experiment that this, this is, and I'm very very excited to have been part of this. This is so cool. Uh, thank you, David. I really appreciate it.